What's up, guys? Welcome back to Mike Eat Yourself. This week's episode, we're going to address the problem that we create for ourselves as we continue to add more and more accessories to our bikes. That problem, it's the rat's nest of wires that we start to accumulate underneath our seat with each and every individual power wire that's needed to power up that accessory. Hang tight and I'm going to show you what I used to address my issue and made my bike look professionally done. So here's the problem we're addressing. What are we looking at? We're looking at my battery box and all of the accessories I have going to it. Look at that positive terminal. There's a ton. It's embarrassing to me. I worked on electrical stuff for a long time in a prior life and that is not how I do business. So I need to get this thing cleaned up. I want this thing to look like it was factory. Now, is it gonna be perfect? Not even close. But is it gonna be a ton better than this? You betcha. So how do we put it in, right? Well, we're gonna disconnect this stuff. We're gonna get that battery out and we just need to find a space for this. Now, these things come in different shapes and sizes. This is a relatively, I guess we'll say mid-sized one. There are some that are much smaller with like Phillips screws. And then there are some that are huge, bigger than your, your regular battery terminal, right? Um, so just pay attention to the sizing when you order yours. I figured this is about right for the area that I'm looking to put it in. I think we can fit it down in here. There is a nice gap in between the battery and we'll make sure we secure the cover on and anything else from possibly falling down in there like a, a wrench or something if I'm working on things and making contact with this and the frame of the bike because that would short it out. So we'll put a little bit of protection above it just to add another layer of safety. But the first step, we gotta get all of this stuff disconnected. And the first thing we're gonna do before we do any of that is we're gonna pull that main fuse because we're gonna be doing some electrical work and with as much stuff moving around as we're gonna have today, best to be safe, pull that main fuse and uh, save yourself from heartache. Battery is out. <laughs> And I'm looking for where I want to put this. So my original thought was I was going to just put it along this wall because there is a good gap there, big enough where I had my amp fuse hiding. But um, the one thing I need to consider is I don't know how well treated this is. And really you're exposed quite a bit here, more likely here than you are say up in the front. Now there is a flat landing here, kind of behind these cables that looks like it clears the battery box. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean that up and uh, do a kind of a dry run to fit it in there. And if it sits in there and I'm able to drop the battery in, then I found a winner. So let me give that a shot. We'll see how it goes. So all I'm gonna do is just take some really, you know, a rag, some uh, rubbing alcohol and really wipe that down. I don't wanna drill into the frame to mount this. So I am gonna just use some red uh, 3M and that should hold it pretty well. Um, yeah, so the choice is yours, how you wanna mount it. I'm gonna just, like I said, I'm gonna rock the 3M and I think that'll do a pretty good job. It's pretty flat here. You just wanna make sure you have a really good clean surface so that way it heaves, heaves as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing that you're limited to is if you've already run your wiring, you need to make sure that your wires are gonna reach, right? So that's the other uh, challenge. So if you got something like this is going to the air ride system, um, if I wanted to put it in this corner, I don't have enough length there, so that would mean I would have to splice that wire and uh, you know make it a little bit longer, which is 100% doable, not a big deal, but something you need to consider is, do you have the supplies on hand to do that, right? If you don't have any kind of uh, splices or anything like that, then you're stuck. So me putting it there, this would be a really good win because everything reaches the positive terminal, so that, that should be solid. 
I'm debating if I want to add one. So I have the negative side best bar, but the reality is I've got like, I think two things attached to it. And the nice thing about grounds are anywhere to the frame is a ground. So you're not, you're not stuck like you are with battery with attaching your wire directly to the battery. So you can leverage spots like these where I've mounted grounds to the frame. So I might not go that way. It's not creating that like a mess at all for me. So it may just be our positive terminal. So let me get that cleaned up, dry mounted, and we'll see what it looks like. So maybe you're wondering, hey Mike, how are you gonna dry fit this thing if you're using 3M red tape or whatever? So what I do is I, I put bunch of tape, you know, on the backside. And so I just did a strip on this thing and I cut a little portion with an X-Acto blade. So that way I only expose a small piece of the, of the tape, the backing. And that's gonna be enough, to, at least just to hold it in place so I can put the battery in and see if it's gonna clear. And if it doesn't, then all I have to do is when I go to remove it, all I have to fight is just that little strip instead of this whole thing, right? So I'll pull it off, remove the remaining parts of the tape and then put it back into place. Um, if this part gets dirty, not a big deal. I've got these two huge patches actually holding it in. So that's kind of how I, I guess, cheat the system when it comes to doing this dry fit stuff. All right, let's get these wires out of our way. And it is not grabbing for me. So I don't know if maybe not enough tape or, or exposed, or maybe the surface there in the middle is bowed out, but it's not touching. So that's a problem for the dry fit at least. But at least I can I can lay it in there. Let me get the battery and place it in there and at least we should have a good idea. So unfortunately, because of how that metal is, it's not sticking. I'm hoping it's just a, a flex or something in something because if that surface isn't sticky, I'm gonna have to find another solution to, to, to mount it, right? All right, so we've got our battery just laying in there and you can see it is clearing pretty well. So that's a good spot. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of that tape, put it back in place and then I can start putting my terminals, my wiring onto that and then wire the battery or a put a wire that's gonna go to the battery over to it. So good spot, that's a win. I don't know if every bike has it. I know this one does. So awesome. So I lucked out, it was just a dip in the metal um, my edges stuck just fine, so it's it's on there very well. I'm not worried about it coming off. I've taken off the nuts from terminals that I want to use, and I can now start adding in my different accessories. And I may have to adjust the wiring to kind of tuck it in so that way it's not in the way. Um, but I can add those into place now, and once they're in, I'll be able to have a nice clean setup, and like I said, uh, just add one wire that's going to come from the bus bar to the battery. Now, one thing that will be important to note is that wire has to be a thicker gauge because all of those devices are essentially pulling the power, the current through that one wire. So you don't want to, you know, connect this battery bus bar to your battery using a 16 gauge or, or something small. You're going to want to look at you know, probably a minimum of a, a eight gauge wire. So basically like an amp wire, right? You want, you want to use something strong and uh, yeah, that way you, you avoid um, shorting stuff out. So let me go ahead and add these in and uh, I'll show you them, show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, so I've got my wires all on there. So you can see all those connections and then I have a connection coming off of that that's going to go to the battery. Now do you remember when I said make sure you have all the terminations and everything? I have all the terminations. What I don't have 
is a fuse to support the main feed to that distribution block. So I'm calling this out because I want to expose the mistakes that I make and also, you know, make sure you guys don't do the same mistake I do, right? Um, so what I'm going to have to do, I gave myself a, a little extra wire here because I am going to order via Amazon, hopefully overnight, a, uh, a fuse connection. So something like, like this guy um, that will support the power, the current that we're going to be pulling through. So probably like a 40 amp fuse. Now, I have other fuse holders that are much smaller. So stuff like... Uh, like this guy over here, but that's that's really small wire. Now, why is that a problem? I need an amp or a fuse that's gonna support the amount of current going through, but if my fuse is larger than the wire, that means the wire's gonna fail first, and that's a problem, right? You don't want that. You want your wire to be able to sustain. You want the fuse to be the thing that goes out, not your wiring. Uh, so you want to make sure you have things matched correctly. If you go on Google, you can search like different gauges of wire and what their uh, like current capabilities are. So that way you know how much power you can be pulling through that. So don't really focus too much on the voltage, but what, how many amps will that wire support? I'm sure there's a, probably a nifty grid somewhere. So anyhow, we're going to put the cap on that. I am going to put a little bit of this cloth tape over it like i said just to help provide another layer of protection just in case like you drop that 10 millimeter right because that's what's going to happen uh that it doesn't go there rest on the terms and somehow reaches a grounding point um in theory it shouldn't happen but i don't want to just rely only on theory i'm not you know a scientist so i'm not that great at theory <laughs> anyhow let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and we're gonna see what the after look of this thing is. So here is the aftermath. Significantly cleaner. Like, look, you can actually see the top of the battery. It is a major difference, right? Game changer, looks amazing. Now, I will say my uh, relay job down in there, um, not the best looking but at least it's its own little compartment and it's not in the way of anything that I need to get to there. Um, but as far as all the wiring, so, so clean looking, um, doesn't get in the way there. Now, I, for you guys, like I've always struggled, not only on bikes, but on cars, the stupid red caps. Like, is there a better solution out there? Like maybe one you can go aftermarket where it just clips onto the actual terminal itself and not try to, associate it to the to the wire let me know i'm curious i don't know i also took the opportunity to move over some grounds that i had so if you saw in the beginning i had a ground wire going to this post and i had another one here so i moved those here i removed the powder coating so that way i made sure i got a good connection i also put a uh, some dielectric grease on there to help prevent any kind of corrosion and to improve that connectivity there um, just for a solid connection so that's it and um yeah so let me get all their parts on and we'll wrap this up all right guys so i mean the bus bar you get the set like i said for sure under 20 bucks so dirt cheap and it made a huge difference nobody's probably going to ever see it so it's really you doing it for yourself that way, when you do have to do maintenance on your bike and you do have to get to your battery or whatever, it's easier to access. It just looks a ton cleaner. And for me, at least personally, when I see stuff like that, when I'm doing work on my bike, I take pride in it. I really appreciate it and uh, makes me feel better. Like, like I'm actually growing and doing something better and becoming just overall more professional in the work that I do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, I would love to have you as a member of our community. Hit that subscribe button. Provide your feedback below. Great question that I had at least uh, was, is there an aftermarket termination or post battery post cover for motorcycle batteries that doesn't suck <laughs> like the one that I have where it's just all flimsy and doesn't really fit well, you know what I mean? So. If you're aware of something, let me know. Or if you have an idea of how you can create one, 
I'd, I'd really like to hear that one as well. So until my next video does post, I hope to see you in the wind.